Do you want to make yourself younger? This is how you do it. Who doesn't? Well, yeah, you're right. Well, <laughs> maybe the dummy in the background. Maybe. Because he doesn't age. He doesn't age. Timeless. Um, I'm Dr. Paul Salisbury. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. Welcome to Talking With Docs. So we're going to do a journal club today. This is an article that was just published like uh, February this year. Yeah. Okay. It's hot off the press. Yeah. And it talks about what you can do to reduce your biologic age. You can't do anything with your chronologic age because sure. that's just time. Yeah. But your biologic age is how old you are biologically. You right. can slow that down. And we're talking like at the level of your DNA. Well, not just above your DNA actually. Yeah. Uh, but just your organs, your tissues, your skin, your cells. Yes. Okay. Um, and this, this after reading this article, I actually changed sort of what I do. Oh, really? Yes, this changed what I do. Okay. You know, most things don't. Okay, okay, I like that. Very rarely, but this actually does change okay. one of the things I do. Okay. All right. So the article is Here called Individual and Additive Effects of Vitamin D, Omega-3, and Exercise on DNA methylation clocks of biological aging in older adults from the Dew Health trial. This was published in Nature Aging. Do you read Nature Aging? I don't. I just read Nature. This is really? <laughs> no. Oh, there is a journal Nature. Yes. No, this is Nature Aging. Yes. It's a slow burn. Yes. Okay. All right, except if I would have changed the name to um, the effects of vitamin D, omega-3, and activity, just because it rhymes. Sure. Oh, yeah. That was my yeah, better. Yeah. It didn't ask me to be on this paper. Maybe. Okay, so this paper. <laughs> there might be some other reasons. <laughs> probably because I'm not smart like that. No, it's not, not your area saying. of expertise, per se. It's, it's not. It's okay. not. But there are experts from all over the world. Okay. Like we have like Switzerland, France, the UK. Yeah, European. USA as yeah. well. Okay. Harvard. So there's a collection of authors who put this paper together. Okay. And if you look, always you look at the biases, right? Are these people being paid by supplement yeah. companies? Are they being paid by vitamin D companies? Are right. they being paid by exercise? No. No. No, it didn't seem Which like there was nice. any conflict of interest. I agree. So we can really take this for face value. Okay. All right. So. I haven't said that. I would say even researchers, though, Here we go. Have, have a little bit of a, not a bias, but like when you're doing research, you want to find something. You don't want to yeah. spend six years and have like a, a null result, which is a result. Yeah. But I think... Having mm -hmm. done some research, mm -hmm. you want to find yeah. something significant so yeah. that you have a paper so that you've contributed to the sure. scientific community. So sure. I think there is still in here. It's just not financial. Yeah. And I think it's less nefarious, kind of. Why don't you like these people? I do, I do like them. I'm just okay. going to say it. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. So having said that, yeah. the, the, the way they do it, how do you measure the effect if something variable is affecting aging? Okay. Right? There's no gold standard for aging. No. I mean, if you did, you'd have to, it would kill you to do it. Yep. It would kill you to do the study Literally. because you'd have to follow people for like 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Yeah. And the investigator would probably die during the time of the study. And you have to control so many variables. It would be very difficult. It's difficult. Yeah, so they need something as a surrogate to measure aging. Okay. Okay. And there is. The field of epigenetics? Epigenetics. They use, well, the, the field of epigenetics is fascinating and covers yeah. a lot of things, but they use yeah. some, they exploit epigenetic markers. Yeah to create these biological clocks. Yes. Okay, so what is epigenetics? Okay. Epi from the Greek word above or on top. Do you speak Greek? No. Are you sure? Uh, sometimes if I go to a Greek restaurant, I order really? in English. Okay. <laughs> um, Baklava. That's, is that Greek? I think it is. Yeah. It's a delicious dessert, actually. Uh, gyros? Yeah, yeah, I think probably. so. Probably. Yeah. Um, so epigenetics, okay? So it's on top of or above genetics. So you can't yep. change your genes, okay? No. Well, I mean, your genes you can, J-E-A-N-S, yes. and hopefully you do eventually and periodically, but your yeah. genes in your body, you can't change them, and those are what represent everything that you look like. And of course. Right? Yes. But think about it. You have the same genes in you now than you did when you were 12 or when you were 18. Right. Okay? okay. And while you're still quite handsome, you're not that fine stud you were when you were 18 years wow, old. Wow, thank you. But you still have I the think. same genes. Yes. So why is that? Wow. Epigenetics. Right. Epigenetics are kind of like, to me, the quantum mechanics of biology because they explain some weird and wonderful stuff. So what Starting is, to lose people. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Am I losing you? Listen, yeah. epigenetics are the things that turn on or off your genes, okay? They're the right. things that control whether your genes express themselves or don't express themselves. Right. All right? That's epigenetics. Yeah. And so they, they can, those epigenetics can be influenced by factors like the environment, what you eat, smoking, yep. and aging. Yep. All right. 
And it really is cool because it, epigenetics is kind of the basis of that nature versus nurture. Yep. Like they did studies where they took some um, mice, gave them a stimuli, and then like shocked them or something. I don't, I don't condone this, but somehow it passed in ethics. And then so they were, you know, the mice were like, okay, afraid of this odor or this stimuli. Yeah. And then guess what? Their offspring had the same fear. Sure. Even after never, never been exposed to that. And then the offspring's offspring also did. Right, so it's built into there. It, so it's so that is the epigenetics being passed on from one well, generation. They didn't learn it. Is they it didn't it? learn it, is but it they there? knew it yes. because their parents learned it. Sure. So that's that's Hard huge work. implications in trauma, right? Sure. If you've experienced trauma or stress, yeah, you can pass that on to your offspring unknowingly. They used to think that the epigenetics were wiped out with the sperm and the egg, yeah. but apparently they're not. Sounds like it. So those the epigenetics, although the genes you pass your genes on, those you can't change. Okay. But what genes you turn on and off? can be through epigenetics. Okay, what did this paper tell us about how we can okay. actually reduce our age? So what, first of all, in order to know that, you have to accept the fact that these biological clocks are a good surrogate for aging. Okay. Do you accept that? Yeah, yeah, it's, nothing's perfect, but I think no. it's as good as we got. Yeah, and I think exactly. sometimes that you have to go with that. Exactly, because there's no go sense. Yeah. So if these biological clocks do represent biologic aging, which I believe they do to a certain degree, okay. then it turns out that the, there's additive effects of taking an omega-3 supplement, in this study they used yes. 1,000 milligrams. Yep. Vitamin D, yes. 2,000 international units. Yes. And exercise. Yep. 30 minutes, they did three times a week of a simple home strengthening exercise program. Yeah. And they found that they could reduce biologic aging, I think it was on the ballpark of about a month a year. Right. So it's significant. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, the, and like it's not 8%. like you're doubling the life. It's a reasonable amount. That's right. what makes it believable. Sure. This was randomized. It was placebo controlled. The and this, pla and this is kind of what Brian Johnson did. We did that other video yeah. about the guys doing like as many things possible, just all of them adding tiny little things that are yes. slowly reducing, yeah. essentially age. It's not making you younger. It's essentially you age less quickly, really. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. You're still going to age, but your yeah. chronicologic age is on a line. Yeah. And then if you're making, are you make if you smoke, drink eat poorly, yep. your biologic age is going to increase faster than your chronologic age. Yeah. Chronic age, chronological. 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 Yeah, you got an extra Chron C. Chrono <laughs> I threw a syllable in there That's right. for effect. <laughs> That's right, it worked. Your chronologic age. There we go. Uh, if you slow down that chrono chronologic, chronologic. I'm getting older right now. <laughs> chronologic age. If yeah. you slow down that chronologic yes. age, that's a bonus for you, right? Right. And so apparently these, and even omega-3 alone. Right. Um, did it, but there is an additive effect of doing those three things. So it's vitamin three, vitamin D, yeah. omega three, yeah. and activity. That's what you remember. That's so a nice mind. little rhyme. Right. And, and we kind of had an idea about this before. We've talked about typically yeah. things that are anti-inflammatory, antioxidant in nature. Right. Usually have health benefits, and now we're essentially measuring them on their ability to reduce our rate of exactly. aging. Exactly. So we've talked before about the pillars of health, and these have all been implicated. So. So nutrition, yeah. exercise, sleep, yeah. stress reduction, yeah. substance avoidance, and social connection. These all reduce yeah. those things, which yeah. help reduce your, which help you live longer and live healthier. So yeah. improve your, improve not only your health span, but potentially your lifespan is what we're talking about now. And now what I've learned is how do these things do it? Yeah. And one mechanism by which those things do it is yes. your epigenetics. Right. Which is what they use to measure your biologic age. Yeah, and like at kind of more the cellular level, what they think some of it is is that methylation. They talk about how DNA. as we age, DNA gets methylated at a certain level. And we typically have less methylation as we get older. But yeah. depending on whether it's methylated or not methylated, it's not always less and it's not always more. Yeah. But some genes are, say, like a tumor suppressor gene. This is a gene that our bodies have developed over time to be active, to reduce the risk of getting a cancer. So if that gene becomes less active because of its degree of methylation, it increases your risk of getting a cancer. Similarly, something called an oncogene, which actually is designed to make a tumor, mm -hmm. um, not by your body, but because of mistakes that have happened, we have um, ways to keep that lower levels of activity. And if methylation alters that, then this has a higher chance of making a tumor. So a lot of it relates to cancer and other uh, dangerous processes that prevent DNA repair or uh, DNA synthesis, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm losing them. Yeah. So you thought I was losing I thought them. that was interesting. That is interesting. And the way that the methylation does it, for example, 
Not to oversimplify. Which is just a carbon and three hydrogens. That's it. And, yeah. and, and not to oversimplify it, but to oversimplify it, it just sort of squishes the genes so that they can't, the information can't be read, yeah. transcribed to messenger RNA, go into the ribosome and make a protein out of it. Right. So you just sort of cover, squish, change the shape of the gene yeah. so that it can't be read. It's the same thing I do when I try and assemble furniture. I take the instruction manual, I'll squish it and sit on it so you instead of it. reading it. I try really? and do it myself. My wife's like, why don't you use why the instruction? Why don't you just read it? I say, no, I think I can figure it out. Just read it. Right? If that's like methylation of the instruction manual. Other ways that epigenetics work is they tag the genes or whatever, different ways, different yeah. mechanisms to stop that gene from being expressed or to encourage it being expressed more. Right. So the take home is that, yeah, you know what, if you were thinking about vitamin D and omega-3s, you should consider them. I think there's good scientific evidence that's going to help you. Exercise, obviously it's going to help you. Other things that have been looked at in this epigenetic pathway and ways to reduce your biological age, one would be caloric restriction or yes. intermittent fasting. Yeah. There's pretty good evidence to show that this helps you. Not from a weight loss perspective, this is certainly controversial and people like to argue about what the best diet or the best way to eat or best way to control your calories is to lose weight. But reducing your calories below your level that you require for the day or a deficit is actually good for you. Yeah, because it, it's a it's role in insulin production. We know that insulin that insulin in your blood is bad for you at yep. high levels for long periods of time. So going hungry as a species, like in North America, we're yeah. rarely hungry. Agreed. But as a species, we should spend some time being hungry. Yes. Uh, most animals do, right? So that's why that intermittent fasting or caloric reduction helps yep. reduce your aging. Another one is a couple of different plant polyphenols. We've talked a lot about them before with their ability to be antioxidants and um, anti-inflammatory components. Um, fisetin and Qcertin, these are some supplements mm -hmm. that have been available. Another one that people have talked about is metformin. Yeah, We've so talked we about metformin. Video, we did do a video on metformin to reduce your age. But in this article, those are the three things. So for me, yep. what it changed for me is, you know, I, I the only supplements I take is a vitamin D, a multivitamin, sometimes a vitamin C. That's okay. all I really take. Right. But now, I take omega three. Yeah, I did before. But yeah. Now and now it's easier because I take when I'm trying to remember what do I take? I take vitamin D, vitamin C, omega three. See how they rhyme? Yeah, but doesn't make it easier. It's easier when I go shopping. Doesn't make it easier. And a multivitamin. Okay. That one doesn't rhyme. No, no. Um, but now, now you know. Now I know a little bit about the field of epigenetics. It's been around since like the mid 1900s. And I think it's it's allowing um, particular companies and healthcare practitioners that are trying to help people age successfully use this information to guide their treatment plans. And this is a really rapidly expanding area of healthcare. So obviously be a little bit careful because it is going to be a business mm -hmm. um, and go with people that are based in science. But yeah, if you're looking for ways to improve your health span and your lifespan, this is an area that's probably going to come up. That's a good point. I like what you just said about health span because a lot of people are going to make a comment and say, oh, I don't need to live forever. I don't want right. to get silly trying to live forever. Right. It's vain to try and live forever. We shouldn't. The plan will die. Yes. When you're talking about reducing your biologic age, it's not necessarily talking about trying to live longer. No. It's trying to stay healthy longer, right. Right? which is increasing your health span. Yeah. So that is one of the byproducts of reducing your biologic age compared to your chronologic age is by staying healthy for longer or increasing your health span. So if you're thinking, I don't want to live forever, I don't want to live longer, just think, well, do I want to live healthier right. for the years I have left? When I think, obviously, everyone gets sick right before they die, right? So you want that period to Not be short. Not everyone. Well, no, but I mean. I mean, if you're in a plane crash. Right, but you're sick for a very short period of time because of that accident, and then you die. Okay. Or a heart attack, right? You're, oh. My yeah. dad died of a heart attack spont you know, spontaneously yeah. on a walk. Had a heart attack, sure. was dead in a very short period of time. Right, so he didn't, sure. he didn't suffer. So yeah. ideally, I think people want to have their disease time ultra compressed, right? You want to be healthy, oh, healthy, I healthy, and yes. then die quickly. Okay. So, yeah. so, so yeah. say if you have like something yeah. like diabetes or high blood pressure, and you suffer for decades, mm -hmm. or you have cancer for six or seven years, heaven forbid, mm -hmm. you, you have to suffer for a long period of time. I think most people would choose to be very sick for a very short period of time and, yes. th and then be healthy up until that point. I Do you know what I mean? So. Yeah, and I think that's what health span versus lifespan yeah. kind of is. And I think the medically assisted dying people would agree because yeah. I don't want to suffer anymore. That's sure. It. Wow, now you really brought something controversial in there. You're dark. If, if you You're were, really dark. No, that's not dark. I, I think we all want to have the best life yeah. while we can for as long as we can. And that's part of what our channel does. Health span. Yes. Leave a comment if you have any thoughts about lifespan, health span, epigenetics. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. Um, share it with somebody you think is useful. And also check out our podcast. Our podcast is over on Spotify. And it's coming to Apple soon. Yeah, it's spotty. It's it's spotty. Sometimes it works, sometimes <laughs> it doesn't. But it's getting there. It's getting okay. more stable. There you go. Um, but yeah, and if you've had a aging hack, yes. put in there. If you feel That's way not, older, oh, I like that. If you feel way older than you are, 
leave a comment and say what you did wrong. Okay. If you feel way younger than you are, tell us what you've been doing. Like Other that. viewers will love it. Okay. Remember now, you are in charge of your own health and you're in charge of how quickly you age. Maybe you are. We'll see you next time. Thank you.